Basically about six or seven years ago I was traveling in China and uh, kind of just searching for that thing I guess we all search for in our 20s mm -hmm. and I came across a photo of tea being made and that's kind of where it started basically. I wanted to go see tea being made. I was just fascinated with, with that part of it. I grew up in kind of a farming family. My grandfather was a beekeeper and all of us are beekeepers and then my other grandfather was a rice farmer. Hmm. And so I was just kind of interested in farming as a in a romance more than like a agricultural aspect yeah. I guess and uh, anyway so I wanted to go see tea being made and we ended up in this village where tea originated in a in Yunnan China and basically everything about this village is tea it smells like tea everybody's in tea it's a village of maybe 700 to a thousand people and uh, the nearest city is 12 hours away and uh, anyway it was it started raining and my wife and I were walking and we got invited in by a farmer and he started pouring us some tea and that cup of tea basically turned into about three years of living with this farmer. We got to learn everything about tea, got to help me producing the tea, picking the tea. Anyway, long story short, um, I realized, hey, this is something that's pretty easy to share with people as opposed to like meditation or yoga and all these other things that we, we want to share with people. A cup of tea is so easy to pour for somebody. So anyway, I, I started sending out this sample of tea to different tea shops uh, throughout America and I was like, hey, maybe people would like this. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I had no intentions of having a business or anything. Long story short, again, uh, people started ordering the tea and I got some really substantial orders and I was like, okay, I guess I have a business. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was about five years ago. I sat with this farmer, honestly, I sat with this farmer for maybe 20 minutes mm -hmm. and I was like, dude, you really have something here. And uh, the tea, it just, it makes you feel good. And we sat there and drank for about 12 hours that first time. Drank until like four o'clock in the morning or something like that. Just complete accident, no exchange of words. He didn't know hello, I didn't know ni hao. Mm -hmm. You know, we just, we didn't, we were like translating on the computer and stuff like that. It was very odd. But uh, I think that's kind of the beauty of tea is that it brings people together. You see all these places that are so divided. Um, whether it's Fresno, like the north and the south, or the west and the east, or a place like America where it's so divided, or the world is so divided. I can walk through a village where I don't speak the language, and some dude says, and I sit down and have tea, and now I'm his best friend, and I'm a brother. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, I think, what tea does, and that's what I hope to do with tea, mm -hmm. is to bring people together. You hope people have that experience that you had on that farm. Exactly, with, yeah. Know. And that's kind of why I specialized in that particular tea, because by diving into so many different pools and saying, hey, I have 400 teas, mm -hmm. uh, so much is lost, you know. And so by saying, hey, I want to specialize in this one tea from this one family, I'm able to bring people into that story a little bit. And, uh, and that kind of brings it full circle. The tea that I have is called Pu'er tea, P-U-E-R-T. It's, it's basically named after the county that it comes from. And what makes it different is a whole bunch of different stuff, but it's, it's the first tea that was ever cultivated on Earth. Mm -hmm. So thousands and thousands of years ago, this, they probably pulled the tea off and it maybe accidentally followed in boiling in water or something. Who knows? <laughs> There's so many different stories. But uh, they started consuming the tea and realizing, hey, this tea makes me feel good. And in traditional Chinese medicine, this tea is the only herb or item that's prescribed for us to drink every day. It's kind of a tea for, for all kinds of people. It's not really a tea that you have to be acquired to like. And so it's pretty easy to like. It's also pretty easy to uh, make. You can boil it, you can make it on ice, you can do whatever with it. It's, it's really easy to consume. But yeah, it was just, uh, it's, it's interesting because it's a tea that has a culture behind it and I really like history and culture and stuff like that. So yeah. it's kind of cool to follow that. Yeah, so we're 6,500 feet up and uh, the village is a sequence of, uh, I think it's about three mountains. And so anywhere you are, I mean, this village, you wake up at five o'clock in the morning and there's roosters all over and the smell of tea is in the air mm -hmm. and it's a tropical rainforest and everywhere you look is misty and it just feels so good. And so that's what I was trying for to, to yeah. create that same experience. Yeah. I got so lucky that I met this guy mm -hmm. because it, this isn't the only guy I met. I met dozens and dozens of people, men and women and farmers and producers and stuff like that. But... I think there was a lot of fate behind it, if you believe in that. I think there was, because the person that I met, his tea happens to be really good. He happens to want to sell it to a white guy. <laughs> he happens to want to learn English. Mm -hmm. He happens to be kind of interested in America. 
And if those things all didn't happen together, it would have just been another guy that I met on the journey, you know? Yeah. And so what brought me there in the beginning, what brought me there was just the curiosity to, um, what brought me there was the curiosity to, to see tea being made and maybe in this village where tea originated, I could see something like that or just kind of take some pictures. Yeah. But what kept me there was obviously the tea and the family and the, that connection. Yeah. What's his name? Leo. Leo Bin. And, and if it were not for tea, that would have never happened. I mean, I would have never had a reason to talk to him more than a couple seconds if it weren't for tea. And, I mean, tea brings us all together. It lets you sit down with your father that you haven't maybe spoken to or sit down with your friends that you haven't spoken to. And it just brings out a more honest conversation because it does bring you to a place where you're sitting together and it's slower and it's more calm. And, and hopefully that's what our tea can do across Fresno and across the world.